See this ring right here? Well, this ring cost me around $50,000 Canadian. And it's actually not iron, it's stainless steel. Now, what did I need to get it? Well, it's simple, a four year engineering program in Canada. For me, it was a nuclear engineering program and also a secret iron ring ceremony. Now, what's the history behind this ring? And why is this a tradition for all engineering graduates from Canadian engineering schools? Also, why did the author of the Jungle Book develop the secret iron ring ceremony? Well, if you're new to my channel, my name is Osama Beg. I have a background in nuclear engineering and on my channel, I help demystify nuclear technologies by simplifying them. But in this video, I'm gonna be sharing a little bit more about the engineering profession and the symbolism behind this ring. So what's the concept behind this ring? Well, the ring is a symbol for the pride which engineers have in their profession. It simultaneously reminds them also of their humility. Any mistake that an engineer makes can lead to disastrous consequences. Just like negligence from a doctor can jeopardize the life of his patient, engineers have a heavy responsibility. Engineers are developing infrastructure and projects for all of society, which greatly enhances and improves the life of everyone in society, but also can lead to destructive consequences if there is negligence involved. So we need to be mindful of our responsibility, especially during an oath that we take called the ritual of a calling of an engineer, where these rings are distributed to us and worn on the dominant pinky hand. For me, I wear it on my left, I should be wearing it on my right. So this iron ring doesn't necessarily certify that a person is a professional engineer. To do become a professional engineer requires registration with the relevant organization, which is followed by examination and four years of practice and around four years of experience after you graduate. And this experience needs to be under a uh, professional engineer as well. So in Canada, engineering is a four year program. You need to do a four year undergraduate, but also a four year followed by four years of practical experience. Now, a popular myth for this iron ring is that these rings were constructed from a collapsed bridge in Quebec that, that fell around 100 years ago. Now, this is a common misconception. However, this incident in history is very important behind the symbolism behind this ring and development of the engineering profession in Canada. So I'm gonna be discussing that in a bit as well. But what you'll notice about this ring is the unique design. You'll see these ridges around this ring. And what does that represent? Well, this represents a fresh new engineer who's rough around the edges. And throughout the years of engineering practice, as you draft and as you conduct your job, you're wearing this ring on your dominant hand and it's, it's rubbing off against papers. And what you'll notice is that these ridges, they get worn down and become smooth over time. And this is the transformation of a fresh engineer who's rough around the edges to that of a more polished engineer who is smooth. And you'll see that ring transforms as you go throughout your career. And obviously this is pre dating the advent of the computer. However, if you were to write on surfaces, this would naturally occur. Now, tradition also asks that the engineering rings be returned by engineers once they retire or by the families of a deceased engineer once they pass away. Luckily, I'm part of Camp One, which is the first camp in Toronto, and it gave us the option of choosing between a stainless steel ring and an iron ring. It's the only camp of its kind in Canada which gives that option. There's around 28 other camps around Canada which issue these stainless steel rings. Now, I personally chose stainless steel because there's less maintenance involved. Um, iron rusts over time and requires lubrication very often. Now, where did this all start? Let's deep dive a bit into the story of engineering. So let's jump into the history of this iron ring. Now, the story starts off with the construction of the Quebec Bridge, which is a bridge that connects Winnipeg to that of Moncton. And it was constructed along the National Transcontinental Railway. Now, however, soon after the completion of this bridge, the bridge suddenly collapsed and killed around 75 workers that were on the site. It was one of the world's worst bridge disasters in history. It was later revealed that the collapse took place because of the error in, in the engineering and design of that specific bridge. Ultimately, it was negligence. Now, why was this negligence? Well, the reason why is because the preliminary calculations that were done during the initial design stage of this bridge, now a second attempt was made to rebuild this bridge. But while ho hoisting the center of the bridge into place, around 13 workers ended up dying as the center collapsed onto them. This is a very unfortunate event in history where many, many workers lost their lives due to negligence on part of engineers. The bridge took around two decades to build, which with a cost of around $23 million, this is around 
$339 million in 2022 dollars, which is quite expensive. So what impact did this have for Canadian engineers? Although this was an unfortunate incident, it had a major positive impact for the future of Canadian engineers. Now, many of the companies that were involved in building this bridge were American companies. And this incident motivated Canada to develop its own internal capabilities and formalize its licensing process for its professional engineering programs. Now, Canada would develop one of the world's most robust accreditation processes for its engineering programs. This would ensure that a high standard of education would be required for licensing. So before we get to the exciting part of this video, the ritual of the calling of an engineer, where we get these iron rings, the secret ceremony that takes place, I'm gonna read you a quick excerpt of the oath that I took when I took part in this ceremony. And I'll start off with, I, Osama Big, in the presence of these, my betters, and my equals in my calling, bind myself upon my honor and cold iron, that of the best of my knowledge and power, I will not henceforth suffer or pass or be privy of passing of bad workmanship or faulty material in aught that concerns my works before mankind as an engineer or in my dwellings with my own soul before my maker. Now that is a level of responsibility which is unparalleled. And this is the introduction of the calling of engineer oath. You can find this online, it's readily available and it's this is only the first introduction of that calling of an engineer ritual. Now let's discuss the secret ritual and ceremony which is called the calling of an engineer. Shh, remember, Whatever I disclose in this video is not allowed to be shared with anyone else because this is super secret. All right, I'm just joking around. This is all public information. So anything I discuss in this secret ritual that I'm talking about is public information. You can find it online in the sources below. However, but seriously, this ceremony is supposed to be a secret ritual. It's a privately held event, which, which has no media allowed. You can't vlog during this ceremony either. And you're not allowed to disclose exactly anything that took place during this ceremony. So no publicity attached whatsoever. Now only local engineering alumni and engineers that are professional engineers licensed can participate. Now engineers who have not previously taken this ceremony or ritual are not allowed to participate. Now it's a custom for those that have gone through it to not discuss this calling with any other engineers, even engineers from other countries. Now what are the origins of the ceremony and where does the author of the Jungle Book get involved? Well, the history of the ceremony starts off with a professor at the University of Toronto. His name was Professor Holtain. And he felt that the Engineering Institute of Canada could do a better job in binding the members across the country. If you've ever been to Canada, it's a large country. And obviously before the age of social media, connecting all these people and making them feel closer together was very important. Now, so he expressed that an obligation statement be developed, something that young engineers in Canada can subscribe to after they graduate, something as like an oath or a ritual. Now, Professor Holtain, what he did was he reached out to the author of the Jungle Book and also a Nobel laureate who won the Nobel Prize in literature in the year 1907. His name was Rudyard Kipling. So Rudyard Kipling was born in British India and he was the author of the Jungle Book. Now, why did Professor Holtain randomly reach out to Kipling to develop this poem? Well, the reason why is because Kipling made references to the works of engineers in many of his poems and writings that he made in the past. So when Kipling heard of this challenge, he enthusiastically said, yes, let's take it on. I would love to develop this obligation and ceremony, which he called the ritual of the calling of an engineer. Now, the oath that Kipling authored emphasizes responsibilities that no henceforth suffer or pass or be privy to the passing of bad workmanship or faulty material. This ritual was developed with the objective of taking these newly qualified engineers and letting them become immersed in the consciousness and social significance of what an engineering profession means. It also involves experienced engineers which take on the responsibility of welcoming and supporting these new engineers to, which, which are ready for the profession, right? So I love this aspect of the um, more mature engineer guiding the younger engineer towards success. 
The organization that administers these callings, they are known as the Corporations of the Seven Wardens, okay? And they are named in honor of the presidents of the Canadian Society of Civil Engineers. Why civil engineers? Because civil engineers were the very first engineers ever, right? So the ritual itself is not connected with any university or engineering organization. Uh, rather, it's copyrighted in both Canada and the United States. Last but not least, the most important part of this video that I wanna share with you is that as a nuclear engineering undergrad, I don't only get one ring. I also get the second ring, which is a zirconium ring, a ring that is used in nuclear power reactors and also this cool looking fuel bundle. And this ring, I usually wear on my pinky finger, okay? Maybe I could wear it on a different finger. Let me know in the comments below. So you can check out this video right here where I talk more about my experiences getting this zirconium ring. So yeah, there you have it. I'm, I guess I'm Lord of the Rings now, <laughs> but uh, thanks a lot for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed and take care. Thank you so much. Bye.